Okay, guys, this is the first part of our national pickups. Steven's going to go over part two because this is the majority of the stuff that we grabbed. Uh, but I'll just show you the first sections. So some of this stuff is going to be going in my PC and such. Uh, so first, I picked up a cricket lot. So we have a Victor Trumper from Wills. I believe this is 1911. And then we have Fry over here. Um, so a few different versions of these. They actually have quite a few different backs. And there's like a test issue that has these in orange as well. I'm not too familiar with those. Uh, but you can see these are Capstan and Vice Regal, which are the common versions. But different backs and variants on these. And uh, CB Fry played both soccer and also cricket, or also known as football, over there. Um, so kind of cool cards on that side of things. Um, up next, we have two Gandhi cards. I think this one's 1934 or 35. I'm not familiar with the one on the right, although I think it's probably like 50s or 60s. I do think it's kind of cool having India over there. And you guys can see the backs. Now this has like small like indents or like almost a hole on here. This one does have some staining and wrinkles, but like at the end of the day, they're, they're cool cards. He doesn't have a ton of them. Probably has others out there that I'm not too familiar with and definitely have to do some research, uh, but also pick that up in a small lot, as well as this Simon and Garfunkel. So pretty early card of theirs, I believe to my knowledge. Uh, Victor Trumper. Then we have a chocolate card of Hobbs. I think this is 1911 or 12. 1911 dating here, so probably a 1912 card. I have another card in the set. I can't remember who it is. And then uh, Australian card of Victor Trumper does have that crease on there, but it is a tougher issue to find. And then I wanted this one forever. It's a Phillips Guinea Gold Black Border card. I've lost actually in two or three different auctions on this one. Now, it's, this isn't as nice as those auctions, but this will be a nice starting point. And if you guys don't know, I believe this is the same image of his 1899 Ogden uh, that I have, which the 1899 Ogdens are much tougher. Now, just for some funny cards before we get into like baseball and stuff like that. So, uh, Ben Carlos, he gave me this one as a custom made card. He just grabbed this from my Facebook page. Back, this was way back before I started going to card shows and eating like crap. Um, but I'm going to get back into that shape eventually. And then uh, some personal stuff here on the back. And then also uh, we have two different foods that they're giving out at the gas trading booth. A uh, deep dish, which I do love. And then also uh, chicken strips, which is kind of funny. Convention hall chicken strips. And these are both numbered to 100, I believe. Uh, 32 and also 71. So there you go. Up next, we have some baseball cards. So let's go over those now. So I didn't buy a lot of roll. I probably should have, but didn't really do the research. Uh, 54 Barra. It is kind of like miscut on the back, but like very nice for 54. You guys can see not a lot of chipping here on the back as well. And the corners are crisp. Then Andrew Carnegie, 1901 Ogden. Looks nice, but does have scratches on it. Don't know how to pronounce his name, so I apologize, but one of the first famous Indian cricketers, 1939 African Tobacco. Another 1954 Dobie, really nice on that shape. Now, I do have a contingency plan with these. I know who sold me these, and we did agree on a deal. I'm sending these over to PSA or BGS for a quick opinion on these. So I'm not 100% on this Reggie White Auto, um, and not 100% on this Herschel Walker, but we'll see, right? Like. So I did put a down payment on it. It was only $100, uh, but I've done deals with the guy before as well. So shouldn't lose that $100 if these are fake. If not, it's a good story. But either way, uh, low risk, high upside. I got these in the mail. So uh, these were not at the show, but I just want to show you guys some more loan jacks for my set build. Uh, here we go. Bell is the best one in here. Uh, he's the third best card in the set, but someone wrote on this one, unfortunately. Most of these are going to be ones or so, and then some Ogden's I also got in the mail. Just want to show this real quick. We got an N151 Longfellow over here, which is pretty nice. And then we have uh, our slabs over here. So Duke K, I got a four. I actually sold my 2.5 to a guy from Hawaii, watches the channel. What's up, Dylan? Uh, really nice two sitting bowl. You can see how sharp these corners are. Don't know how that got an E2. 54 Banks 4.5. This will be part of our inventory. 1967 Stan Musial. These are very tough to find. And then 54 Bowman Mantle. Looks nice, but does have a crease. I don't know if you guys can see it. And then a nice looking two of Walter Johnson. Does have a little paper loss, I think, on the eye, but the corners aren't too bad. 
and this is a Sovereign, which is a little bit tougher, but backs aren't as popular on that side of things. Um, but yeah, 67 Venny. I don't know if that's paper on top of it. I don't think it's paper loss, but that front is a blazer. Okay, here are the rest of the pickups uh, through Steve. Today, we're gonna go over some pickups from the National that I have on my left and some pickups from my personal collection that I have on my right. I'm gonna go over some of the stuff I picked up from my personal collection first, and then we're gonna get into what we picked up for inventory. The first card I have here, as shown by the back, if you can read closely, it is a Goodwin's Champions card. It is the 1887 N162 Goodwin Champ of Isaac Murphy, famous jockey and famous African-American athlete. He was also has an award, the Murphy Award, named after him. This card is really cool, and I've been looking for it for a little while. And shout out to Orlando because he helped me out and was able to get a trade working. Traded him, I believe, two vintage baseball cards for the Isaac Murphy. I forgot exactly what they are, but just one of the trades that I did at, Na at the National. Really cool that I actually was able to work a lot of trades with people. Normally, I end up paying a lot of cash for my PC stuff. So it was nice being able to save some money. Isaac Murphy, famous jockey, super cool card. And I collect a lot of african-american athletes that were discriminated against and before the turn of the century he definitely was so very cool card bringing a little closer isaac murphy next card i'm going to go over this i got from a dealer at a show at the show the 1926 exhibits jimmy fox this is widely considered to be his rookie i'm going to show you guys the back now check it out it's a decent looking one, not an amazing one, but not a beater either. So decent looking one, I'll take it. Also traded for this. They worked with me, I traded in E-Series Nap Lajaway. Can't remember exactly which one, but did that in cash. And I recommend for you guys too, if you can find cards that are pretty rare and you're able to trade your stuff for it and you know you value the stuff a lot. Like for me, I value the Jimmy Fox Rookie as a pretty cool card. So I don't mind going ahead and having to trade something for it and add a little cash on top. So that's what I did for this one. Very excited. And last card we have here, we have an 1887 Cap Anson lithograph card. This was actually my last pickup of the National. The last day before I went to the signing for Kareem, I was able to go ahead and pick this card up. This is pretty cool because there's only one of the black and white version at PSA. So this is pretty cool to be able to pick up and even see raw. When I saw it, I actually got like very happy, especially with it being raw that I could probably afford it for a decent price. As you can see here at the top border, it is definitely trimmed. These come out and they have a little design. If you could see on the on the bottom right that it kind of has a little design on the board. As you could tell, it's definitely trimmed and really happy to add it to my PC. I'm definitely gonna get this graded soon. Probably gonna be in the next SGC reveal. All right, guys, we showed you the stuff I put in my PC and now we're gonna show you the pickups for inventory. Before I get into it, we do have some stuff that ended up being sold before I was able to film this. So this is the inventory that we have. This is most of it and let's get into it. All right, so first off, we have Hans Lober from Ticho 4 Ranley set. Really beautiful set. As you can see here, it is gold embossed. Really cool card. I'm gonna show you the back as well. You know, the Walter Johnson of this goes for a ton of money. But Hans Lober, pretty cool. Next, we have a Hugh Duffy. And this one is an American Beauty rare back. It is trimmed, as you can see, right here on the left and right. Those corners, that's how you know if something has those sharp-looking, weird-looking corners, you know that it was probably trimmed. And we look at the back, and you get the American Beauty rare back, which is very cool and definitely carries a premium for T206 cards. Next, we have a John McGraw from Croft's Candy. Now, this portrait, this photo, and especially the pink background is used on other cards. But as you can see, this one is the Croft's Candy. And you can tell when you flip it over to the back, it says Croft's Candy. Pretty cool advertisement right there. We have Lefty Grove from 33 Gowdy. Decent looking one there. Fortunately, the back is a little messed up. You can definitely see it through the color there, but not a bad card overall. Have an Adios. This got the A for authentic. 
And I remember I found it before, but I can't remember why. Oh, that's right. It had the coloring in on here. Sometimes they have the overprint back, which that kind of looks like. But here, as you can see, I'm going to bring it closer. It was just colored in. So that's how I got the authentic. We have Home Run Baker, T205, Hassan back. Next, the Vic Willis, Philadelphia Carmo, E95. Eddie Plank from Standard Carmo. We actually had, at one point, we had three of these. We sold one of them, and we're currently down to two. We do have an authentic that looks very nice and also managed to pick up a one. Definitely cheaper than his Tito 6 version. Next, we have a Grover Alexander from the uh, Ritterado set, which means retired. This one looks pretty nice on the front, but unfortunately the back is really, really messed up to where it's almost skinned. You can see a little bit of the card there, but most of it looks pretty skinned. Tough card, but still very cool. We also have the Fox from that set. As you can see, it got the one from the paper loss on the front. And last card, we have a 1938 Bob Feller, this one is pretty beat, and that's why I got the one, which I think in any grading company would basically give this a one, but this is a, is a not the best looking one out there. Not the worst either, but yeah, just a uh, pretty okay-ish looking one. Alrighty guys, that is all of our pickups. Thank you very much for watching. Remember to like and subscribe, and we will see you in the next video.